Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to go over a few things that we did last time. And just to make sure, um, just make sure that your player one underscore BP in the event graph, there's nothing here. And all your stuff was correctly put into the event graph of wirebot underscore anim BP. And basically, I initially just copied everything from my third person anim BP and I pasted it in over here. And at the end here, I added the event blueprint update animation so that the HUD would display, connected it in there. And we've got, let's go over it quickly. We've got our get player controller connected to our owning player of our create character HUD widget. The widget class is the character HUD that we made. And it's connected to, then we connected to add to viewport so it will be displayed. Then we connect this to see if pawn owner is valid, which is just a uh, valid function try to get pawn owner and this pawn owner information is used in pretty much all the other parts firstly to set is in air in this case we created a new variable is grounded you could also use is in air i just named this variable different name yours is grounded as well if you did not do that as well just to match mine it makes life a lot easier and then we had setting speed i named it player speed over here you can see player speed and this is a float uh, whereas is grounded is a boolean all the red ones are boolean so let's quickly find it boolean there you go and finally this is what we did this is the new thing we did this week or you need to do this week let me just rename this comment so i'm just going to add the word the letter b so the word makes sense basic attack animation function so first thing we want to do is connect our after we've set the speed, we want to connect our player speed over here into cast to generic game character. So you right click, you say cast to, and the name of the game is generic, uh, generic fighter game. So you just use generic fighter game character, and there you have it. And what you won't be able to get, <coughs> now there are two things here. What you won't be able to get immediately without a bit of coding is was first attack used. We'll, I'll show you how to do that in a second. But what you will be able to create is a variable boolean was first attack used underscore anim for animation. And you can connect it out in the meantime. But for was first attack used, which is a vital part of this component, we actually have to quickly go into our code. So let's quickly go to the header file dot h and we can scroll to the very top and there's, there's not a lot I did here. I just basically copied and pasted the this over here, the amount of health the character has from what we did in the last uh, tutorial. And I pasted it over here and I just changed the comment and changed the category to attacks and changed it from a float player health to bool was first attack used. And by doing this, you've now created the variable. However, it will still not be in blueprints. To add it to blueprints, you have to go to dot cpp and we scroll all the way to the very top first thing you want to do um is where you've got player health equals 1.00f but you can just add over here was first attack used equals false just put it in the same spot and this way you can avoid making any errors if you're not comfortable with code then we can scroll down and go to this section here where we're doing our attack one and attack two in attack one um you can press enter over here and then you can type in was first attack used equal true. If you have that, it means every time you press attack one, first was first attack used will be true. And that will be vital. Once you've done this, you need to build, rebuild. And if you did it correctly, it will be succeeded, zero failed, one skipped. If you did not get this, pause the video at the various parts I just showed you. There's only three things you have to add. One is this. Two is this, and then three in the header file. This is the only thing you wait, no, hold on. This is the only thing you, you're adding. So, as long as you added all of this correctly, it should compile perfect if it's always been successful. Do not, when it, I had to redo this entire tutorial series because I saved when this wasn't successful and it wouldn't open again. So one tip with Visual Studio that I've learned the hard way is always make sure it's compiled successful before moving on. Do not try and continue the tutorial series because it's just going to be a lot of heartache. Right, so once you've done that, um, 
and, and it's compiled successfully so check your spelling and grammar i know if we all make simple mistakes there we can go back into unreal and this is what we've got at the moment we use this ybot character and this is our general layout right so let's start off with the character hud uh, the character hud remains the same in the get health bar the event graph remains empty and uh, the player one bp remains empty the ybot anim bp anim bp uh, you, you should now be able to to know if, if, if it was successful if it wasn't successful you can just go yeah and press compile and then you should be able to do this extract this out now and type in was first attack used now there is a big difference between the animation and the 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 code function so was first attack used is a boolean saying um a function boolean saying this attack is was used it's true or false right uh whereas this animation is saying whether this animation will trigger or not and we want this when this function is true we want this animation to trigger if that makes sense that's why we've got we got this connected to this and if it's working you, you'll you can type in was first attack used and make sure you're not using the anim yeah using get was first attack used that's how, that'll be the correct thing to use and then if, if it was used you want to connect this to you want to set the was first attack used anim which is over here the one you created and then you want to connect was first attack used anim to was first attack used i know it seems a bit laborious this is the way to do it and you just connect it like this and the last thing you quickly want to do is add an anim notify attack ended into was first attack used currently you won't be able to do this but let's quickly go over the character state so I still have from the last episode the walk states I've just disconnected it because I didn't like seeing the yellow sign here and we're actually going to do this a little bit later on because I want to follow along and make sure this this tutorial follows a similar process so it could be used as a reference so we will connect these walk forward and walk backward and some these are all the animations so let me just show you a couple of them so we've got I actually found better walk states so let me just show you the walk forward which I think is the one we are using. That looks good. And we also got a really good walk backwards state. Fists up, which is good. And let's quickly go back. Right, so I've just downloaded two punches. Um, a right punch and a left punch. It's the same punch, it's just mirrored. So we've got this punch over here, which is, that's a uh, right punch. And punch three over here, this should be left punch. It's the exact same punch, just mirrored. So we're gonna connect the left punch. So you can pretty much drag and drop this here and then name it left punch. I'm gonna delete it because I've already added it. And then you can connect this uh, from idle to left punch, from left punch to idle. Name yours left punch also. It just makes sense because we're going to have left punch, right punch, left kick, right kick. And later on down the road, we'll have lots of combos. Right. So the first thing we want to do is click on this over here. So when, what, are the, what is the condition that it moves from idle to left punch? Well, let's click on this. The condition is, was first attack used anim, which is what we set up in the event graph. So if the first attack was used, um, anim was used if it's set to true and it will only be set to true if the first attack was used um let's quickly go back here the, so this will be the condition for it for the punch to work and then if we go back here oh hold on silly me if we go back up here to the to the, this and when it's not used we have nothing however we Let's quickly go back. If we click on this, I said automatically rule based sequence for this one over here, but I did not do it for yeah because this one is was first deck used. It's based on this anim. Whereas this one, we can just set it back to once the animation is done, it goes back. And um, anyways, so when we go back to our player one, um, no no, our Ybot anim BP event graph. How do we get the anim notify underscore attack in to appear? Well, if we go back to our state machine and we looked at left punch, 
we know that left punch is punch three. So we'll double click on punch three, which is this one over here. And we're gonna create a notify. And so we have a notification of when this punch ends. I put this on frame 20, roughly. And then I just press, well, I hovered over line one. I just right clicked, add notify, new notify. And I typed in attack end, just like that. And in fact, I, in the meantime, did the exact same thing for punch two, which we will be doing hopefully soon. But in this episode, we're only going to add one punch just so that it's not too overwhelming. So back to punch three. So you just want to add that notify. So you just right click, add notify, new notify, and type in, so add notify, new notify, and you can just type in attack end. I don't want to type it out now because I've already done it. And then you can just move this across where you want. So I'm making my, my attack end at frame 20. And you can kind of just move around here to see when you feel attack end works. So I'm going to press play. So this is punch. Okay, the punch looks like now it's coming back. So it's not fully back, but I'd say the attack has ended around about here. So, and the animation can still continue. So what we've basically said is we're adding an anim notify attack end, attack ended, um, to reset was first attack used anim. So it's no, so we can fire off the next attack. So if we press uh, play, so currently this is all we have is this punch. Now it might seem a little bit slow. Uh, it's very easy to fix the speed, but I don't want to. You know what? Let, let's actually fix the speed of the punch at the very least. Uh, so we're going to go back here. This is the punch. And over here by play rate. I'm just thinking what we should do here. We made the play rate five. Let's just see what happens. Compile, play. It might not look right. Yeah, so it's trying to play too fast. So we'll, we have to leave this on one and we actually have to change the play rate basis. Let's try that. Compile, press play. Okay, that's made it super slow-mo. <laughs> right, so we probably want to double the speed by making 0 0.5. Compile, play. Let me just click here. There we go. See, now that feels a lot more fluid. And we will be making this, um, extruding this out to make, to mess with this functionality even more later on. So we have more control over this. But for now, that'll be fine. I'll just leave it on 0 0.5. So. Now that we're done with that, we're pretty much done with this tutorial. So I just want to go over everything we've done so far. Right, so in the character HUD, the event graph has nothing but the get health bar has this. And if we go back to the designer, this is the layout. And we chose the color blue, I guess, or choose whatever color you like in the appearance section. But we've created this get health bar bind over here by the progress by the player one underscore BP, because there's going to be multiple players that can play this game. In the event graph, there's nothing. The viewport, we have our man. And we've got nothing in our construction script at the moment. In the Ybot underscore anim BP, we have a lot going on. We actually did, we, we renamed this to Ybot State Machine. And we actually did mess with the walk walking features last time but I've just disconnected for the time being because we will get back to this it's still here and it's ready just to connect will take two seconds and we've got the entrance so the animations the game starts automatically entrance pose which is a taunt about cut, cutting your throat and in fact we could even mess with the base speed of here maybe make this 0 0.5 compile let's press play see now that seems a lot faster All right. Once again, I shouldn't spend too much time on this because all of this is going to be changed to custom animation made in Blender. But um, 
yeah everything so we've got the entrance pose to the idle pose the idle pose is automatically looped which is crucial so looped whereas the entrance pose is not looped and the left punch is not looped and hopefully you've seen everything you need to see the other thing worth seeing is if i click on this automatic rule base so it just moves it to the next section this automatic rule based this we've it says was first attack used because we connected this and that's about it everything is pretty much straightforward and we initially copied and pasted a bunch of stuff here and i'll go over this one more time just so you can view it event blueprint update animation immediately we set up the character hud by get player controller uh, we connected to the character hud create character hud widget and let me say add to viewport and then we say try get pawn owner is uh, we check whether it's valid and then we check if it's in the air or on the ground and if we press play currently we don't have any jump animations but i think we still can jump so now we in the air this is our <laughs> but yeah we'll we, we'll 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 get there everything will look a lot better down the road we set the speed and then we've got the basic animation function for the first punch which we will expand upon later on Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial. And check out Mixamo. There's lots of stuff there. Also, hopefully you didn't struggle too much with the code in the header file. This is all we have at the moment. As well as the CPP file. Cool. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.